Hello, I am Emily. I am currently a student as well as an artist in British Columbia. I'd like to start my video by taking a moment to recognize the traditional territories of the Lekwungen and the Saanich peoples, in which I have been given an immense privilege to learn, teach, and create on. So today, I'm going to be taking you through my process behind oil painting a bear and the line work of six other animals. This painting is meant to respect and honor the seven grandfather teachings of the Anishinaabe with an emphasis on the teaching of bravery. If you would like to learn about those teachings, I have attached some resources in the description. I also have the privilege of having Christopher Hamley's input on my project. Currently, he is an assistant professor at UBC for the Department of Linguistics. Um, he is a director of Experimental Linguistics and Fieldwork Lab. He is a descendant from the White Earth Nation in Minnesota. He has a particular interest in language revitalization, and most of his work surrounds his ancestral language of Anishinaabe Moi. At the end of the video, I'll share his thoughts on bravery and how we can alter our approach in our healthcare system. It's a pretty nice day outside, so I'm going to gather up all of my art tools, get set up, and begin. This is the bear that I'm referencing, and I've just completed a quick rough sketch. painting, I always like to start with the ears because they are the most forgiving as I figure out my painting colors and my textures. The key to any sort of realism in my paintings are lots of tiny, tiny brush strokes. Again, lots and lots and lots of detailing and tiny little brush strokes. So here I am just painting the undertones of the fur. So I always leave the nose and the eyes last because I find that they bring the entire face together um, and they bring a sort of personality to the animal.
After planning the line art, I then begin to work on the background. I paint my signature. I've been doing this one since I was 14, so it may look a little juvenile, but it does have a hidden purpose. In each painting, I leave behind a tiny piece of my heart. And this is my final work. If you could give any advice to future healthcare staff working with Indigenous communities, what would it be? It's hard to broadly generalize across all Indigenous communities, but I think the most important thing for me is respect. Respect means meeting someone where they are at, recognizing the journey that they are on and that brought them to the present. Listening to someone can go a long way to creating a solid understanding. It takes a lot of patience, but I think going at the pace of the people that you are working with makes it easier for everyone. In the Western world, we often have a tendency to rush and try to keep to some sort of predetermined track or schedule, and that isn't usually the way things are done in Anishinaabe communities. What does bravery in or with Indigenous health mean to you? I think there is a lot of bravery in taking a step back and listening. It can be a lot more challenging to sort of let things go than to hang on to them. You will get the most out of working with our communities if you give that space.